What's up guys, Brad here, AKA Home Theater Gamer, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the AOC 27G2 gaming monitor. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that AOC did not pay me or sponsor me or send this monitor to me. I paid for this with my own money. I've been waiting for this monitor for a while, pretty excited. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Anyway, let's uh, talk about the specs, which are pretty sweet actually for the price. You're looking at a 27 inch 1080p, 144 Hertz IPS panel with a one millisecond MPRT response time with three selectable overdrive modes. It has adaptive sync and is G-Sync compatible. And I'll talk about that more a little later. It has a maximum brightness of around 250 nits. Uh, it has 1001 uh, static contrast ratio, and it also features 120% sRGB coverage. And something kind of unheard of in this price range, it has a height adjustable stand along with pivot and tilt adjustment so you can actually move it into portrait mode if you want to. Now all of that comes in at around $210 USD for the 27 inch model. There is a 24 inch model for around 180 USD and that uses the same type of IPS panel. But we're just gonna be covering the 27 inch model in this one, so let's get started. Now, I'm not gonna be doing an unboxing of this thing because honestly, that's not really my thing and you can watch thousands of other videos on YouTube with that kind of stuff in it. I do wanna go over real quick what it comes with just so we get that out of the way. Obviously, you get the monitor, the stand, power cord, um, some little cool flyer things there that just basically, who reads these? Comes with a, what is this? Ooh, a display port cable, fun. Also uh, an HDMI cable, which is, I mean, props to AOC for, for you know, including both of these. That's, that's pretty awesome. Normally you only get one. Oh, you get a bunch of this stuff. This is cool. And uh, some styrofoam. So putting the stand together is fairly straightforward. Just tighten the thumb screw on the bottom of the base. I don't really need to walk you guys through this stuff. It comes with instructions. Do you really wanna see someone put the stand together? What I will say, it's height adjustable, which is really awesome for a monitor at $210. That's kind of unheard of. It can also be tilted and swiveled, and it can also be put into portrait mode. And this being an IPS monitor, the viewing angles are great. For connections, you're looking at two HDMI 1.4 inputs, a single DisplayPort 1.2 input, and an audio out jack for connecting speakers or headphones. There are no speakers on this monitor. Aesthetically, it's not a bad looking monitor. I personally could do without the red accents that are kind of all over the place on it. Uh, it has a very gamey vibe, but again, it is a gaming monitor. It doesn't really bother me too much. It's more like a personal preference. The feet on the front come out pretty far. I don't even know if you call them feet. If you're considering getting like a monitor riser, just make sure you get one that fits. Otherwise, I don't know, it'd probably be fine, but you know, aesthetically, it just looks weird having like these monitor legs coming out of the front. So video quality wise, how does this thing look and perform? Well, I'll be honest, the first time I turned it on, I felt like I was about to go plaid. Coming from a 27 inch Dell monitor that's around the same price, I noticed that AOC definitely had more pop. I couldn't determine if this was down to the expanded sRGB coverage of the AOC or if it was just down to like slight gamma difference. I was able to get the Dell and the AOC to pretty much match in terms of overall color rendition and grayscale. Uh, although I didn't push either too far as without a meter, you can really screw things up if you're not careful. Overall panel uniformity is quite good with only some minor vignettes in the corners on my model. The monitor that I got does have some slight backlight bleed in the upper left, lower left, and right in the center above the AOC logo. Uh, it's not super noticeable, but it does pop up in overly dark games like Control. But on the flip side, I did notice that my unit didn't have any dead pixels, which is always a major plus. In terms of performance, this thing rocks. Up until owning this monitor, I had only ever experienced 75 Hertz. So seeing true, 144 hertz gameplay was a game changer, even for single player games. I'm not in a competitive multiplayer. I mainly stick with single player games or co-op, but the difference is so pronounced that I can't imagine going back to anything lower. I actually did go back as just kind of a test after about a week and 60 hertz just felt so stuttery in comparison. It's insane how quickly you get used to a higher refresh rate. If you haven't experienced 144 hertz, definitely check it out. Now in terms of setting overdrive, uh, there's three different settings to choose from. Well, four if you count off. There's weak, medium, and strong. Weak, I would never use for any reason. I didn't find any any benefit to using it. 
Uh, I did settle on medium. I felt like it gave the best balance between input latency and overshoot. Strong is really useful if you know you're gonna be at 100 plus frames all the time. Since I'm using an RTX 2070 Super and the AOC is G-Sync compatible, when I plugged it in, it had already recognized G-Sync compatibility and it was enabled by default. Running through my usual tests of 3D Mark and even the G-Sync Pendulum demo, I didn't notice any flickering or tearing or brightness fluctuations in the image. Since this monitor's adaptive sync range is 48 hertz to 144 hertz, it does feature LFC, which is low frame rate compensation, meaning when you dip below that threshold of 48 hertz, it will double the frames, giving you a smoother tear-free experience. However, what I did notice was low frame rate compensation kicks in at around 53 hertz or 53 FPS. So at 53, it's doubling your frame rate to 106. And although I didn't test the monitor with an AMD GPU, Adaptive Sync should work without issue. Lastly, I found the menu system to be adequate. It has all your standard controls, such as brightness, contrast, gamma, and RGB color controls. There are also five different user selectable presets, but I just found the user preset to be the most accurate to my eyes. The selectable overdrive modes are simple to navigate to, and there's even a frame rate counter that is really handy if you plug in a console and want to monitor performance. The monitor does feature an MBR function, uh, but in order to use it, you have to disable Adaptive Sync, which to me wasn't worth it, uh, but your mileage may vary on that one. With that said, the biggest negative of this monitor for me is the buttons that access the menu. They will test your patience. They're on the bottom of the bezel to the right, and they're just small and weirdly spaced enough that you'll end up turning the monitor off most of the time when you go to access the menu. The timeout function for the menu system is 10 seconds, so if you're fumbling around trying to figure out where your fingers are supposed to be, and you've for, well, yeah, see, the menu system would have just gone away by now. So, yeah, good luck with that. All in all, the positives of this monitor far outweigh the negatives. You have a uh, IPS panel, 144 hertz, a uh, one millisecond response time. Well, you know what? Let me just read this off. An IPS panel with great viewing angles, height adjustable stand, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time, excellent RGB coverage, selectable overdrive modes with G-Sync compatibility. I'd say this is probably the best bang for the buck monitor for these for those, these, who wrote this? I would definitely say this is the best bang for the buck monitor at this price range. 1080p at 27 inches doesn't bother you too much. This is a great buy. If it does, consider the 24 inch. Are there better options out there? Well, yes, of course, there always is. But at this price range, I'd say this is hard to beat. And that'll do it for this video review. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun making it. If you like this video, consider subscribing and hitting that like button, leaving me a comment down below telling me how bald I am. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one where I try to dig myself out of a prison with a rock hammer. It's height adjustable, it pivots and it twists, and it's, I don't know what I'm saying. There are no speakers on this monitor, in this monitor. Which one of those is correct? I don't know, I need to go back to school. Aesthetically, it's not a bad luck, uh, do that. Coming from a Dell monitor at around the same price, the colors and everything pop, no. Or if it was just a different, slightly different gamma, or if it was slightly different gamma, and I screwed that up again. Wow. Overall panel, yeah, wow. Overall panel uniformity is actually really good on mine. I had read a bunch of things that kind of made me weary. Uh, no, we don't do that. My unit does have some slight backlight beat, yeah, black light beat. Now in terms of setting the overdrive set, now in terms of setting the overdrive settings, wow. Since I'm using a 2070, wow. Since I'm using an RTX 2070 Super and the AOC 2070 Running through my usual benchmark tests of 3D Mark and even the G-Sync Ultimate Pendulum demo. Wow, Ultimate? Where did I come up with Ultimate? And although I didn't test the monitor with an AMD BG, uh, <laughs> AMD, AMB, AMD. The selectable overdrive modes are simple to navigate to and they're easy, oh, wow. And want to monitor performance. So you have that there for free. The monitor does feature an MBR function, func function, wow. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one where I try to dig myself out of a prison with a rock hammer. That's fine.